Hey everybody, it's been a long time since I've been back um, with the video, uh, but I wanted to show you what I've been working on for probably three or four months now total. Um, it's a game that I've been developing specifically for Android devices and then possibly iPhone devices in the future. Um, to It's just a game, um, so I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with uh, Minecraft or more specifically Terraria. Um, so Minecraft is a 3D uh, world where you can pretty much just sandbox, so you can do whatever you want. Um, Terraria is the same thing, but it's 2D, so it's a little bit different. Um, <clears throat> I have been working on a Terraria clone, um, but I, like I said, I'm making it specifically aimed towards Android devices. So I don't plan on really releasing it for typical computers, but I want to release it um, to the Google Play Store and possibly the App Store for um, iOS devices. Um, so yeah, like I said, I put over about 70 hours into this game entirely, um, from the physics system to the world system to the lighting system. Uh, pretty much everything has been done by me from scratch. Uh, the library that I'm using is libgdx, so I do have to give them a ton of credit for the uh, help that they've uh, done and how easy it's been to actually implement the game and get it running on Android devices and on desktop. Um, so for the ease of recording, I'm going to show you the desktop version, um, but it's going to be the same exact thing on Android. There's really nothing different. It's just running on an Android device. Um, so I'm going to show you and show you it on there and to show you all the functions. Um, it's also important to note that this game runs on my computer at 60 FPS and also runs on the Android devices at 60, 60 FPS. So it runs very fast. Um, there's visually no lag. Um, there might be occasional spikes that I'm still working out, but I've he heavily optimized the game um, over these past few months. Uh, so to start out, I have a loading or a world loading and saving system. Um, so worlds that you create will be uh, loaded and saved, um, or you can load them and they will be saved automatically. Um, now worlds are generated completely dynamically um, using Perlin noise, or more specifically Simplex noise, um, if you're familiar with that. Uh, but it pretty much lets you, similar to Minecraft, um, input a seed or a random number or anything like that that pretty much uh, lets you generate terrain um, in a specific way so that when if I would input uh, input the same key that you did on your computer the game would actually look exactly the same um, so there'd be nothing different about it so it's all dynamically and procedurally generated um, so the world is completely generated automatically I do have a little bunny running around uh, there are some I implemented him all of like 20 minutes ago um, just to get something moving on the screen uh, entity wise um, but there are some graphical issues you can see um, but it's pretty clear on what I have implemented here. I do have the world system implemented. I have an inventory system that you can click and go through. Um, when you're using a tool, you can break the different blocks. Now, right now, I have it so that the pickaxe breaks things instantly. Um, that way, it's a little bit easier for me to move around throughout the world. Um, and you also see that blocks drop, um, and I can also pick them up. So like I said, I implemented this whole physics system by, my, by myself. Um, this actually started out as a physics engine and then I built on top of it so you can see the project's called actually physics test um, I did this a while ago I just want to implement a physics system and I had a pretty or I have a pretty decent one going so I decided to um, make a game off of it um, and it's a very efficient system which is important as well um, I've had a lot of people ask me why I haven't why I haven't used things like box 2d for example um, big key thing there is it's just super it would bog down the system way too much um, that my physics system really is um, really doesn't take too much memory space. It doesn't uh, take up too much uh, time on the actual application itself, so it won't cause too much lag. And it's also very dynamic, so it'll collide, it'll take collisions of any size, so whether you're a bunny or you're a person or you're a huge monster or anything like that, or a block, it'll all, all the collisions will be the same. Um, or if you're a small block like this, it all runs off the physics engine. Um, and it's very, very easy to just use for me. So I might release that in the future. Um, open source, I don't see why I wouldn't do that. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, I've also implemented the lighting system. So as you can see, it's it's a tile-based lighting. So as you actually dig farther down, you'll see the lighting actually gets a little bit lighter, um, and it kind of like fills through. Oh, the bunny's stuck with me. Uh, but I also implemented uh, torches, so lights that will be um, dynamic. So as you move along, if I were to delete the actual blocks around it, um, the light will extend. Uh, so it's very, very dynamic. Um, it's very, very efficient too. I worked on this algorithm for the lighting probably for over a week um, to make sure it was exactly how I wanted it, make sure it was efficient enough. Um, because as you add lights to games, um, they typically just continue to take up a lot of resources and really slow down the game. Um, so this is a super efficient system. It has pretty much an infinite amount of lights that you can place. Um, so it's a very, very good system. 
uh, that I implemented. I'm pretty happy with it. All there, although there still are a few small glitches, um, Java's floating point. Uh, I've well, I have precision loss with floating numbers, um, but that's a different topic. But um, the world actually has over currently it has over a million blocks in it. Um, so it's a huge world. Uh, like I said, it does run on Android just as fast as it does on desktop, um, and it manages it all very efficiently. That's how I'm able to do it. Um, I also have it. Uh, generating procedurally, procedurally generating um, coal, caves, and dirt and stone. So it's all done using um, the seed that you would input. So it's all completely random, um, and it's all very, very dynamic and uh, efficient, um, which is important. Um, so like I said, I do have the inventory system uh, added into it, so I can show you what that's like. It's very, very basic right now. You can scroll up and down through your inventory. Um, you can also drag things around, uh, so you can drag and drop. Um, if you drag onto one another, it'll switch them, um, things like that. Uh, you can also split them. So there's a split button here, it splits them in half. You can also add them back together. Um, you also can't have stacks, there's stack limits. So this stone stack, for example, can't be greater than 64. Um, the pickaxe can't be greater than one. Um, you'll see a little information pops up here. You can also drop things. So that's just simply dragging it. Oh, I'm sorry. It's actually just clicking the uh, block that you want and then clicking the trash can and it'll actually fall and you'll have a few seconds to get away from it, so you'll pick it up again, you'll re-pick it up. So that's that. Um, I also implemented the crafting system. Um, so right now it's very ugly looking, I'm well aware of that, but it's just here to show the system itself. Um, so this top one is to simulate the different tools, so the different tools you'll be able to create. Um, this one's to simulate, uh, in this case it's like furniture, I guess you would call it. Um, but you can see this is the requirements, and if you have enough you can craft it. So I can craft, craft a few uh, torches. And then that's done. And then I can also craft a pickaxe. Ooh, uh, see, and then there's glitches and all that fun stuff. Uh, but like I said, it's all being worked on. It's still being worked on. Um, as I implement things, sometimes things break like that, for example. Um, but I'm just, I'll figure that out later. I'm not too worried about that. Um, but uh, like I said, I've been working on this for a long time. It's going to be done specifically for Android devices, and it's going to be completely free, um, which is going to be great for you users. Um, you don't like to pay things, which none of us do, including myself. Um, the next thing I'm going to be working on, since I've pretty much nailed out the majority of the world fundamentals, um, is the actual like entity and mob system. So I want to start adding in mobs, which is what that little rabbit was at the top, and actually teleport back up to it. I have a key that just teleports me to the rabbit, or the bunny, whatever you want to call it. Um, so right now, he's just randomly moving and randomly jumping, um, depending on random values. So, I mean, he's nothing special, obviously, but as the is, this is just an example to show you um, the entity system and the capabilities of it. So it's completely dynamic, completely random. Um, adding him took all of downloading a picture and just kind of adding him to the game. Um, so it's very, very simple to do. Uh, and I'm going to create keep creating um, new entities, specifically zombies and things like that to make the game a little bit more interesting and fun. Um, and then once it's playable, I'll probably release a beta. Um, and I'll keep you guys updated on all this, of course. Um, I'll probably release a beta. Um, here's another little glitch with the uh, falling of the blocks. Um, the beta will be completely open, so anybody can join it, use it. And that'll be pretty much used to uh, test out the game, um, help me find any glitches with it, uh, to see if I need to optimize specific things um, for the people who have not as powerful um, devices as I might. Um, so I'm like I said, I'm trying to hit every single thing um, on the spectrum here to let it run and work everywhere. So this is kind of like a meant to compete with Terraria, the mobile Terraria, although I know that it, that's very hard to do. Um, it's just something that I plan on working on over time, and clearly I've been pretty dedicated to the development of it. So um, I've actually been streaming development of it, so here's the proof that I'm working on it for over 70 hours. Um, but there's this website called livecoding.tv. I actually heard of it um, not too long after I started developing this. Um, actually, I heard about it after I developed the physics engine. Um, and once I heard about it, I decided I would give it a shot. Um, so I've been using it for the past few months. Um, have 74 total hours streaming. But I stream pretty much every day that or any time that I have free time. Um, so you can always come onto here. I'll put the, the link in the description. Um, I definitely recommend uh, registering. It's really There's a lot of different live streams here, not even just mine. There's a ton of different people who have some really great content content um, it's on all types of things. Um, so it's a pretty, pretty cool uh, website. It's relatively new too, so I definitely uh, suggest you take a look at it. Um, 
But yeah, I'll definitely get, keep you guys updated on the updates as they come through. Um, but if you'd like to keep updated, you can see my past streams. So you can kind of see where the game has gone over the past few months. So if I go all the way down to the bottom, I mean, I have a ton of them. Um, you can go to part one and just see the development changes um, over time. I mean, I started from pretty much nothing. And uh, now this is where I am. So I've definitely come a long way. I'm really proud of what I've done. And I do plan on continuing it. Um, sometimes this website does crash. It uses Flash, which is kind of a pain, um, especially because I can't go into here on like my, uh, on my mobile device, my Android device. Um, so it kind of sucks. Let me see if this is it. So, I mean, in this, I was actually using uh, Android Studio, uh, the Eclipse version, before I got uh, Android Studio's uh, IntelliJ version. Um, so that's kind of interesting. But this was the old system. I mean, there wasn't even walls behind it. The lighting was really, really basic. Um, it was really ugly. So, I mean, a lot has changed over time. It's definitely cool to look back and see what I've changed over the time. Uh, but if you guys would like to keep up with the project, like I said, come to that link. Um, I put a, I'll put it in the description to my uh, stream. But I just want to get the game out there and kind of give you guys an idea of what I'm working on. So uh, be sure to keep updated, and I will give you more updates to come through. All right, I'll see you guys later.